Thank you. <coughs> good <coughs> Excuse me. Good afternoon. Welcome to this meeting of Barabura Council. This is the first virtual full council meeting to be conducted, so please do bear with us, and especially me. Officers and members <coughs> have done some training, so hopefully it'll go through quite well. May I first of all remind you some domestic arrangements. It is important that all participants conduct themselves in an appropriate manner. Please put your mobile phones on silent. If any member or officer wishes to speak, please raise your hand through the participant facility on Zoom. If you are not speaking, please mute your microphone until invited to speak. Even if you're not speaking, it may be still shown on the screen, so please remember how this meeting is being conducted. Please do not interrupt other speakers. If members do lose connection to the meeting, we'll adjourn for 10 minutes to assist them in reconnecting. If <clears throat> I would like to remind everybody present that this meeting is being broadcast live to the internet, the whole of the meeting will be recorded, except where there's confidential except items. If you're attending a meeting to speak and persistently interrupt the meeting, you will be asked to leave. If a member of the public asks a question to the meeting, they will be deemed by the council of consented to being recorded. By entering this meeting, you are also consented to be <coughs> recorded by the council and the possible use of these sound recordings for webcasts or for training purposes. To vote on that matters, I will ask the De Democratic Services Manager, John Hook, to manage this process. A move or a second it will be requested, a roll call for members will be undertaken unless there is no dissent by the affirmation of the meeting. Please reply with I vote for, against, abstain, and please remove your microphones. That's the for formalities, members. Let's proceed with today's business. <laughs> the leader of the council, Ann Thompson, is quite rightly asked for a minute silence to honour all the barrows victims of coronavirus. And it it's it is only right, so I, I like to thank the leader that we pay our respects to all the 60 victims that we suffered from. And I hope and I hope that we do not see it again. Because it must have been horrendous. Taking your last breath and you couldn't be comforted by your loved ones, and I hope we never see it in our community again. So can we please respect a minute silence, please? The one minute silence has now concluded, Chair. Thank you. And his apologies for absence. First <clears throat> item in the agenda is apology for absence. So I'll hand over to the Democratic Services Manager to do a roll call of members and officers present at this meeting. John, you're on mute. Can I ask the attendees to introduce themselves, starting with members, please? I will say each member's name. Please respond with present. Councillors Asud? Present. Barlow? Present. Biggins? Present. Blessard? Present. Brooke? Present. Burley? Present. Burns? 
Present. Callister. Present. Cassidy. Present. Edwards D. Present. Edwards H. Present. Gorn. Present. Hall. Present. Hamilton. Present. Husband. Apologies. Johnston. Present. McClure. Present. McEwen. Present. McLeavy. Present. Maddox. Present. Mooney. Present. Morgan. Present. I have apologies from Councillor Knott. Pemberton. Present. I also have apologies from Councillor Piddock. Preston. Present. Roberts. Present. Robson. Present. Ronson. Present. Seward. Present. Shirley. Present. Thompson A. Present. Thompson C. Present. Wall. Present. And Worthington. Present. And the I will ask the officer's name. Please respond with your name and job title. So Sam Plum. Sam Plum, Chief Exec. Sue Roberts. Sue Roberts, Director of Resources. Steph Corden. Steph Corden, Director of People and Place. Debbie Store. Debbie Store, Interim Legal Services. Paula Westwood. Paula Westwood, Democratic Services Officer. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. <clears throat> Agenda item number two, declarations of interest. Do we have any members of any interest? No, Chair. Councillor Worthington. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I've got an interest in agenda item nine, page 126, item 2.5. It's to do with Hackney and private hire licences. Thanks, Troy. <clears throat> Any further interests? No, thank you. Agenda item number three, confirmation of minutes. Do you agree that the minutes of the meeting of the council held on the 27th of February 2020 is printed be approved as a correct record? Agreed. 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 The minutes of the meeting will be signed at the next practical opportunity. Thank you. <clears throat> Agenda item number four, announcements. Any announcements from the chairman, leader, or head of paid service? No? No, no, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> Agenda item five, a question by a member of the public. We have a question from a member of the public. Please may I ask the Democratic Services Manager to allow Mr. Zaccarini into the meeting. Mr. Zaccarini is now in the meeting. Thank Hi. you. Welcome. Uh, welcome, Mr. Zaccarini. May I remind members that this agenda does not give rise to debate or voting. Once Mr. Zaccarini has put his question, he has five minutes within which he can develop any relevant points. Once a question has been put, the leader, councillor, and Thompson will reply. May I, in, may I invite Mr. Zaccarini to put his question? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and to the rest of the council for allowing me to ask my question this evening. Uh, firstly, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jay Zacharini. I'm 18 and a local shipyard apprentice. Uh, so this is my question. In relation to future resilience and growth of the economy, will you detail the investment plans through the Future High Streets Fund and Town Deal? What priorities can you set out in regards to projects to be delivered together with an indication on how they will improve productivity and generate new jobs for Baron Furness. So just to follow on from this, I do have some extra points I'd like to expand on. Um, so I think one thing that's really important is how can you show um, that you've actually taken on board the feedback 
from a wide range of residents across Furness. I know you've sent out surveys and things, um, but, you know, how will you display what people have come back with? You know, how are you sure you're actually listening to people's views? You know, I think this is really crucial as we can't just spend money for the sake of it. It needs to be spent and worked on in specific areas to make that long-term difference to the talent centre that is needed. Um, and after reading um, on, you know, Brilliant Barrel and things like that, that large sums of money from the town fund are looking to be spent on new cycle routes, walking routes, uh, community hubs, including cafes and things like that. Uh, you know, in my view, I don't understand why this money isn't being focused on uh, in key areas such as Dalton Road instead. I think the public really want to see this money being spent directly to improve the look and the functionality of the town centre, as at the moment it is looking tired and slightly unwelcoming in certain areas with, you know, boarded up shops and um, rubbish around. And um, I think that, you know, if the money could be spent on Dalton Road, it could be to entice shoppers when it's, you know, when it's terrible weather, why not install new covers or the Portland Walk and things like that. I think they're the sort of things that people of Barrow want to see in the town centre, not on the outskirts. You know, we want to see that go on the town centre. Wow, this money's been spent. We can see where it's been spent. Um, and I think with the, latest, with the latest announcement from shops like Thornton's and Top Shop, River Island, and even Debenham's potentially that they're going to close up shop, how do the council actually see the town centre surviving with less and less shops being open for local residents? I think... You know, as well as the damage already caused due to coronavirus, um, I think you know it's important to try and now persuade new shops to stay open and even invite new businesses into the town centre. Um, how you do this, I'm not sure, maybe lowering business rates. Um, but I think it's also about how you entice shoppers to still shop, um, maybe even by offering free car parking for a long period of time instead of just currently now with the coronavirus outbreak when people are really shopping. Um, maybe think about new experiences in the town centre, not just shops or cafes, maybe you know, different experiences that could be on offer. Um, but I think I'd be interested to know, and I think the public would be, is uh, what is the council's vision for how the town centre will look in the next 10 years? Where do you want, where do we want to get, where does the council really see this getting to? And I think, lastly, I think it's really important that the council understands that the people of Barrow are proud of our town and want to be able to enjoy spending our money in the town centre and boosting the local economy. However, currently, I feel it just isn't enough to bring people into the town centre. And if we want our high street to survive, drastic changes need to be made to secure the long-term prosperity of Barrow's high street. And then, as a member of the public, I feel this Labour-led council has been out of touch with the public for many years now. And I think this is now the chance to really take on board what us Barovians want from this funding. It's not just, you know, the government and the council's funding. This is Barrow's funding. This is Barrow's money. It's the resident's money. And I think it's really important that is, you know, the public I listen to um, with how this money is spent. So I would like to thank you for allowing me the time to ask my question this evening and putting my points across. And I think... You know, it's, everyone wants to be proud of Barrow and what it has to offer. And I think this opportunity with the grant from Boris Johnson's government really gives us that boost that we've needed for such a long time, even more so now with the current circumstances with coronavirus. So I hope we can make the most of it. And I hope that, you know, we can really reimagine Barrow's town centre um, for the long term. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr Zaccarini. Councillor Thompson, the leader of the council, to reply. Right, thank you, Mr Zaccarini, for that. It was very enlightening. <clears throat> we as a, a Labour council and as a Labour administration intend to do the best with that money. That's why the plans we have put forward for using the money is uh, in the best interests of the town. <clears throat> the other thing I'd like to pick up on as well is the fact is that you know, our town centre, we only own one shop. We do not own the shops. The shops are run by private businesses and are owned by landlords who probably don't even live in the town. We have absolutely no control on what happens to them shops. We have no control on the businesses that go bankrupt. 
they are certainly not going bankrupt from anything that we do because, as I say, we don't own the shops. We get no money off them shops at all, except the business rate. And the business rates are set by government. So Mr Johnson himself will set the business rates. So it's, it's, you know, it's up to him. If he wants to give people a business rate holiday, well, that is up to the government to do that, not up to us. We cannot do that. It's not in our control. We all want the best for Barrow. And we think we, we need to retain our young people here because a lot of our young people, they, they leave school and, and they either, if they go to uni, they don't come back because there isn't the opportunities here. Or they stay here and they don't have the skills to get into, into the local jobs. So we are working with BAD, a University of Cumbria, on part of the town's deal, which will give a new university and skills hub and an institute of technology campus here. And that is the best thing we can do for the young people of this borough. The ones even still in nappies, you know, they'll, they'll have a lot brighter future. They'll be able to train for the jobs that are available here. You know, and, and, and another point, I'm going to give you a written reply, Mr Zaccarini, because I did read the first letter that you wrote, which said far different things to what you've said tonight. So I will give you a reply on your original email, if you don't mind, and that you'll get that in the post. <clears throat> but another thing I've just got to say, <clears throat> you know, Barrow Borough Council has lost 45% of its budget since 2011, since 2010, when austerity started. You know, we, we have really struggled to keep jobs, services and everything going. We've had no spare money at all to do anything. You know, and you, 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 can, you can't blame a Labour government in that unless you're the one that says, oh, my God, you, 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 you spent all the money in the crash. Well, now, the economy now under COVID is worse than what it was on, on the crash. You know, and we're all going to have to be part of that recovery. I'm just hoping that nobody... This government does not decide to pile more austerity onto local communities like ours. Because I'm telling you, if they do, we will be on the bones of our backside, to be quite crude about it, because we'll have no, no leeway to do anything. And so, as far as I'm concerned, if you want to do good for this town, you write to your Prime Minister and you say to him, we do not want any more austerity. Our town cannot take any more austerity. And to be quite honest, the austerity that we've had has crippled most local councils. We're in quite a good position because we've been very, very good and we have made our, uh, our finances very, very secure from the start of austerity. We've been very prudent over the last 10 years and we have made ourselves into a secure council, but we are not, we are not alone. There's, there's, there's a lot that are secure, but there's far more that are just any more austerity and they'll go over the edge. And then what's then for local services? I'm glad you're happy about living in Barrow. So am I. I think it's a wonderful place. And our plans with all that the scope with Future High Streets and Towns deal will make this place a far better place to live for everybody. We, we need to tackle deprivation. We need to tackle skills learning. And that is what we're aiming to do with what we are doing. Thank you very much. You'll get a written reply from your first email, Mr Zacharini. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. And can I personally thank you, as well as other councillors, Mr Zacharini, for your attendance? Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. You will, you will now be removed from the virtual meeting since the public participation is concluded, but you can, you can continue to watch the remainder of the meeting by the live stream, should you choose so? And I don't think you will, will you? No, I think I will. I, st I will. Oh, well, God, you will. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that. <laughs> See you. Thank you. Agenda item six. Listening Mr. Zaccarini. Sorry, Chair. Mr. Zaccarini is now in the waiting room. Thanks, John. Agenda item six, list of engagements carried out by the main deputy mayor. Do members have any questions of uh, <clears throat> the duties carried out? Can I move the report? Thank you. Agreed. <clears throat> Agenda item number seven, virtual meetings. I call upon the leader of the council.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I'd like to move agenda item seven, virtual meetings. The report seeks approval of the virtual meeting rules and protocol, which is to operate for remote meetings undertaken in con accordance with the relevant regulations. Members have had an opportunity to comment on the draft and the report also provides a draft calendar of meetings for the coming year. I move that the Council approves, one, the draft virtual meetings rules and protocol, two, the draft calendar of meetings for 2021, 20, noting that additional meetings may be required as business requires, and three, notes that the Council procedure rules will be amended to reflect the mandatory standing orders where remote meetings are held. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Leader. Is there a seconder? I'll second that. Thanks, Councillor Brook. <coughs> Any questions, comments or amendments to the recommendations? Mm. Councillor Hall. Yeah, it's it's just the fact that we're going. We've got now a list of virtual meetings going right through to next year, and, and I, I think we'll all agree that the best meetings we can have are face to face. Now I know there are some councillors who will not be able to attend face to face meetings, but we have large enough rooms uh, with screens etc. that we could have face to face, and anybody that's vulnerable can actually log in. And I just think going all, you know, right through to next year virtual. It's not really going to be, it's not required. I really do believe we should try to get as much face to face as we can. And we can do face to face and maintain the social distancing. And we can in, in also ensure that the individuals who are deemed vulnerable, which there are a couple of councillors, I know, can attend by uh, you know, uh, Zoom or whatever. So we got. So you move in there, yeah, I, and then well, that's why I say I, I'm not in favour of all the of all the meetings going um, virtual right right through to next year. I think we should actually try um, as soon as possible to start holding some face to face. Chair, any Chair, the uh, Debbie Saw, uh, the legal officer, would like to speak, please. Thank you, Debbie. Mayor. Sorry, thank you. I uh, just say that we'll continue to keep the meetings calendar under review. This is putting the dates in the diary so me members know when meetings are coming up. At this moment in time, we're not being advised that um, hybrid or even um, non virtual meetings are recommended, but we're going to keep that under review over the next three or four months as we see how things are developing. Um, so this is a mechanism which enables the council's decision making to continue um, and we will keep it under review. But this is about setting dates in the diary for transacting the council's business moving forward. OK, Thanks, Debbie. Tony Callister. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just a comment regards uh, virtual meetings. I certainly wholeheartedly agree with what Debbie said there from legal services, but I will make note that today's meeting, I've never seen so many people actually in attendance for a full council meeting. Point over. Thanks, Tony. Councillor Shirley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's not relating to this point. It's just to make the Democratic Services Manager aware that uh, Councillor H. Edwards has been removed from the meeting inadvertently and is unable to reconnect. In that Did case, do you get that, John? Mayor, yes, in, in that case, Mr. Mayor, do you want to just bear with me? I think she might be trying to come back into the meeting. Just bear with me. Councillor Edwards should be in the meeting now. Yeah, but I can't see anybody. There was no problem, John, before you'd put everybody in the waiting room. It'd be fine. It's okay. They're all coming back now. Thank you. So you're okay, Hazel? Yes, thank you. Thanks. 
<clears throat> Can you put your hand down, Ben? Is any further hands Council raised? Mooney. Councillor Mooney, Chair. Councillor Ian Mooney. Yeah, I just want to offer my support for this. I think it's the most sensible way forward. Obviously, I I spend my time on the front line dealing with COVID. We still have COVID, and I've myself had it. Um, I know how, how quick this can come on, and we're now unleashing a lot of people back into society who have been sheltering and isolating. So we don't know if a, new, if a second wave is going to come. We still have a high R rate. We have a lot of vulnerable people sitting on this council as members. So I think the most sensible thing to do is to follow the guidance. So full support for this. Thanks, Ian. <clears throat> I will now ask the Democratic yeah. Service Manager. Chairman, Chair, Council Blazard would like to speak. Sorry, Sean, I, I can't. I can only see so many people. Yeah, uh, just as a carer for somebody that's on the vulnerable list, I just wanted to uh, echo the points about keeping the virtual meetings. We don't want to see uh, like the government originally did where disabled people and the carers of disabled people are excluded from any type of thing. I know Councillor Hall said we can go on uh, screens and stuff, but that kind of defeats the purpose of full involvement when everybody in the room is going to have to be on a screen, so you might as well do it and save money. I mean, it just seems to be a waste of money uh, for some sort of ideological point where uh, the vulnerable could well get excluded again, as we have done throughout this crisis. Thanks, Sean. Councillor Shirley. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I think as well, one of the benefits of the uh, virtual meetings is, of course, the they are streamed online uh, onto YouTube so that uh, more members of the public are able to observe democracy taking place in our council, um, which is something that uh, I absolutely support. and. To that end, it's perhaps something that, if it works well, and um, we might consider uh, doing when we are allowed to return back into the council when we've defeated the coronavirus and it's safe for everyone to do so. Thanks, Ben. Councillor Hall. Yeah, it's not ideological at all, Sean. It's actually a, a proven fact that face-to-face -face meetings work better and more efficient. And I accept that now is not the time to do it. The point I was making is that we're going right through for 12 months. And I take the point now from legal services, so we're setting the times, but we do need to look at different things, I believe, going forward. Thanks, Councillor Hall. Any further questions? I will now ask the Democratic Services Manager to take a roll call on vote. Chair, yes. Chair would be... Would the mayor like? Would the leader of the council like to reply to that? Councillor Thompson. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, I, I have to agree with Debbie. We have members of staff that have to work in the town hall, and we, we as well as putting members at risk, we were putting members of staff at risk if we went back in too early. And we have got to think of all these things. So I, I think at the moment we will stay like this. I know some of the meetings that I go to as leader out of the, out of the town, out of the borough, uh, they're going to continue on Zoom because it's far easier than getting in the car and travelling. And I'm sure the county will be thinking about this because, uh, you know, sometimes it's far easier to do this than spend an hour and a half in the car go to Penrith and an hour and a half in the car coming back. You know, so I think there is some value to having uh, virtual meetings. But I, I love face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, you know, the atmosphere on Zoom is not definitely not the same as what it is when you're face-to-face -face with people. But at the moment, I don't think we possibly can go back. But as soon as it's safe for us all to go back in the town hall, I'm sure we will do. Thank you, Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Can I ask the Democratic Services to take a roll call on votes cast, please? Thank you, Chair. The motion has been moved by the Leader of the Council and seconded by Councillor Brooke. Please reply with for or against or abstain. Councillors Asood. For. Barlow. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I, I was not on when, you know, it, um, the motion was moved. So can you tell me what it is? 
We'll go check the plane now. Can the leader of the council give a, a brief resume for his talk, please? It's just about the protocols and their uh, rules about having virtual meetings here. It's agenda item number seven in your pack. Councillor Thompson, it might be an idea if you can just read out the motion that you moved so she's aware of it, please. OK, thank you. <clears throat> this report seeks approval of the virtual meeting rules and protocol, which is to operate for remote meetings undertaken in accordance with the relevant regulations. Members have had an opportunity to comment on the draft and the report also provides a draft calendar of meetings for the coming year. I move that the Council approves, one, the draft virtual meetings rules and protocol, two, the draft calendar of meetings for 2021-2021, noting that additional meetings may be required as business requires, and three, notes that the Council's procedure rules will be amended to reflect the mandatory standing orders where remote meetings are held. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Would you like to again, John? Thank you. Thank you. So, like I said, the motion has been moved by Councillor Brook and seconded by Councillor Roberts. Please respond for four, with four against abstain. No, no. Councillor Asood? <laughs> four. Barlow? Four. Biggins? Four. Blessard? Four. Brook? Four. Burley? Four. Burns? Four. Callister? Four. Cassidy? Four. D. Edwards? Abstain. Edwards H. Councillor Edwards. Abstain as I wasn't party to the debate. Gorn. Uh, Hall. Four. Hamilton. Four. Johnston. Four. McClure. Uh, McEwen, uh, McLeavy, uh, Maddox, Council Maddox, uh, Mooney, uh, Morgan, uh, Pemberton, Four. Uh, Preston. Sorry, four. Roberts. Four. Ronson. So Robson. Four. Ronson. <coughs> Councillor Ronson. Four. Seward. Four. Shirley. Four. Thompson A. Four. Thompson C. Four. Wall. Four. Worthington. Four. That's carried four thirty two abstentions. Thanks, Sean. Can I just say before we moved on, it was actually the it was actually put by Councillor Thompson. Seconded by Councillor Brook. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <clears throat> Agenda right number eight, Heritage Lottery Fund Grant. Shipyard Town Project. I call upon the Chairman of the Executive Committee, Councillor Brook. Well, hello. Welcome to everyone still watching on YouTube. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Um, anyway, now we have some really, really good news. Those of you who say that we never do anything, we have uh, this next item is about the Dock Museum, where we have actually received a grant of over eight hundred thousand pounds. Are receiving a grant of over eight hundred thousand pounds from the National Lottery Heritage Fund. Those of us who are very old Barovians might remember when that was the Law Road, and um, that seems like not 
that long ago to some of us old folk. And it is now the Dock Museum, the playground and everything. And the good news is that we have now been offered a grant from the National Lottery Heritage Fund. So the grant is to do the Shipyard Town Project, which focuses on the heritage, the rich heritage of Barrow's industry from the 1950s to the present day, as well as looking at the future. Um, something that I was very keen on. There's some, there's quite a lot of stuff in there for young children in the in the actual museum, as well as a fantastic playground next to it. So it's really good news. Uh, the reason it is on the agenda and I'm speaking about it now is because the council has to approve um, some conditions of the grant so that to enable us to receive it and to enable our officers to get on with spending it for our community. So I move the following recommendations. So the grant of £816,700 from the National Lottery Heritage Fund be accepted, having regard to the conditions of the grant and grant offer letter at Appendix 1 and delegated authority be given to the Director of People and Place to accept the grant on behalf of the Council, that the Director of People and Place, in consultation with the Director of Resources, be authorised to enter into an agreement with the National Lottery, Lot National Lottery Heritage Fund for them to provide the funding grant in respect of the Shipyard Town project. To agree, the Council commits £25,000 to the project for future management and maintenance costs, this is broke down as 10,000 from recurring revenue and 15,000 set aside from the major projects reserve. That's on page 25, agenda item eight. Let's have a look. Uh, and that the director of people and place in consultation with the director of resources be authorized to procure and appoint the necessary resources required to implement and deliver the project within the approved budget and council procedures. And five, to agree that in order to meet the requirements in Appendix 2.2, within 28 days of the date of permission to start, an application be made to the Land Registry for a restriction to be entered as detailed in paragraph 7.2.2 of the report. There you go. That was exciting. Thank you. Thank you. But it is good Thanks news. for keeping it brief. <laughs> is there a second there? A second this, and I reserve the right to speak at the end of the debate, please. Thanks, Lee. Any questions, comments, amendments to the recommendations? Councillor Bazaar? Yeah, I just want to uh, say well done to all the staff that have been involved in this. Uh, it's quite a big process to put these uh, kind of funding applications together. So I just want to do all the staff that have worked on this just need uh, a general round of applause from from everyone in our community i think so well done agreed any further questions i will now ask the democratic services manager to take a roll call on the vote vote cast sorry mr mayor and uh, somebody's just said that the live stream is off it's just got a picture of the town hall on I can't find the live stream either. I will go and check now. Is it running? Has it been off? Councillor Thompson have just checked. The live stream is fine. It's running properly. It just a shame that after going through what Derek's just gone through and what other and the good news coming at the town, it's actually been missed. Anyway, <clears throat> over to you, John, the votes uh, cast. Chair. Uh, Councillor Roberts seconded the motion and reserved his right to reply. Does Councillor Roberts want to say anything? Yes, thanks. I'll be very brief. Um, echo Sean's points, uh, staff at the Dock Museum. It's a great place and it's about to get even better. Um, I think we should look forward to it being um, something which the locals can connect to even more about the shipyard history. And it's worth mentioning that the contribution to the cost from the John Fisher Foundation and the uh, Furnace Maritime Trust and B are going to make this um, make this all happen. So thank you. 
Thanks, Lee. How, how much actually are we getting in the in it in the fund? Just under a million altogether. Wonderful news for Barry. That. Thank you. Can you do the roll call, please, John? Just wondered whether the chairman would like to say anything before we take the vote. Well, I'd just like to echo what Sean said. In my past life as a community development officer, I spent many a happy hour doing bids to various lottery funds, and to get a grant of over £800,000 is a considerable achievement. It's quite hard work, and... Um, I look forward to seeing it spent because my grandkids love it down there. So there'll be even more down there for the kids when it's all done. I'm looking forward to seeing it all spent properly. So, yeah. Any further questions? Roll call, please. The motion the has votes. been moved by Councillor Brooke and seconded by Councillor Roberts. Please respond with four, against or abstain. Councillor Sood? Four. Barlow? Four. Biggins? Four. Blessard? Four. Brooke? Uh, four. Burley? Four. Burns? Four. Callister? Four. Cassidy? Four. Edwards D? Four. Edwards H? Four. Gorn. Four. Hall. Four. Hamilton. Four. Johnston. Four. McClure. Four. McEwen. Four. McCleavey. Four. Maddox. Four. Mooney. Four. Morgan. Four. Pemberton. Four. Preston. Four. Roberts. Four. Robson. Four. Ronson. Four. Seward. Four. Shirley. Four. Thompson A. Wait a minute. Four. Thompson C. Four. Wall. Four. Worthington. Four. That's carried unanimously. Thanks, John. <clears throat> Moving on to agenda item number nine, draft climate change policy and action plan. I call upon the chairman of the executive committee, Councillor Brooke. Right, sorry, it's me again, but um, I'm going to give you some slides now, just so you don't have to look at my face on YouTube. Agreed. Is that a good idea? <laughs> Definitely. Is that, is that going to... Is that there? Is that there? Yes. Can yes. you see that? Yeah. Yes. Right. So this is our draft. Um, well, it's our climate change policy and action plan. Um, I would imagine that this will be unanimously approved as well as Donald Trump isn't in the room. And he seems to be the only person who don't believe in it. Um, so the summary of what uh, we're proposing here. This is a very, there's a very, very lengthy document attached on, on uh, the council papers, which you'll be glad to hear that I'm not going to read. I would be here all week. Um, they outline the context of why we're tackling climate change, why it's important to the council, and it sets out our proposed actions. Um, the background and context to this, um, I think we'll all be familiar with. But we in Barrow, a low lying coastal area, we're um, one of the areas that will be most affected by a rise in sea level and coastal erosion. Um, so we, you know, we do have a particular need to um, do something about this, as well as the general need for our future generations. Uh, we recognise we've got huge opportunities in Barrow that we can do something about this, and we can increase the development of renewable energy and low carbon energy, increase sustainable transport, protect trees and biodiversity. Uh, we did declare a climate change emergency on the 16th of July last year in Council, and since then we've had a cross-party and officer working group developing a policy and action for Barrow as part of the Cumbria-wide approach to achieve zero carbon in Cumbria. And you will see a picture on there of one of our fellow councillors, although I won't name which one it is, just on the right of the screen there. 
Um, partners in Cumbria, not just ourselves, but all the, the councils and health have been partners across the, across the board in Cumbria of looking at a baseline report on on um, the carbon the carbon baseline and what we can do to tackle it. And there's a very very say, detailed report in in the agenda that's gone out for everyone. So this re we are in the process of estimating the greenhouse gases um, emissions across Cumbria by residents and visitors. And we've got our, on here, our ambition to reach net zero no later than 2037. Um, this support is supported in our council plan, which we adopted, I think, at the last, probably the last council meeting that we actually had in person in the town hall, I think. Uh, where we had clear priorities around increasing prosperity, growing a diverse economy, improving the environment with better homes, preserving our natural beauty and supporting the people who live here. Our plan sets out a commitment to create a climate emergency plan, which will protect the environment, enhance green spaces, parks and beaches, reduce our use of natural reserves, raise awareness of natural assets, and engage with our partners and get everybody else to join in. And that there, I, I'm told, is a flower that's on, on Walney. If anybody knows about these flowers, I can't remember what it's called now. Walney geranium, um, or is it Walney a Walney geranium? That'll be or it. it. <laughs> anyway, to achieve net zero, we will reduce emissions from our estate and operations, reduce energy consumptions, from homes, businesses, and transport, will reduce our consumption of resources, increase recycling and reduce waste, um, increase that carbon <laughs> capture, and will increase public awareness. Um, and we have actually done some things. Um, we haven't just waited until council adopted this plan. As, as those of you um, who remember going in the town hall will probably have noticed, um, we have LED lights, which use a lot less energy than in the, um, the old days. Um, we went to a green tariff in April. Um, we are getting lots of trees through the Woodland Trust in the park and Furnace Academy. We've been encouraging schools to do it. Um, we've got two car parks identified for electrical vehicle charging points. Um, we're promoting a refill campaign to encourage people to reuse water bottles rather than single use. And we have a few things in the pipeline. We've submitted a million pound bid for low carbon barrow, which includes making improvements to council houses and other buildings and creating a carbon neutral Peel Island. A decision for that is imminent. Uh, as part of the town's deal, we are hoping to improve walking and cycling infrastructure and we have a bid in with Cumbria County Council for electric buses in Barrow, and fingers crossed, we will be successful in that bid. Um, we're the, the town in Cumbria that's been chosen to go forward for that bid. So we are doing stuff. We are planning to do stuff. Um, there is a huge document there. I'd like to thank our officers and members for, for all the work that they put into that. But we do live here, and future generations, we want to live here. And this is for them and not just for us. So the recommendation to council is that you approve the climate change policy and action plan and you note the recommendations of the carbon baseline for the Cumbria draft report. Did I finish? Is that okay? Thanks, Derek. Can you hear Is there a second there? Uh, I second the proposal and I reserve the right to speak, please. Thanks, Lee. Councillor Hall. Yeah, uh, you know, it's one of the few things that united all councillors. Mr. With. Mayor, I, I understand we're offline. Uh, yeah, uh, don't know. I'll get, just go and check. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Thanks, Dave. 
Councillor Hall. Yeah, as I said, the climate emergency, we declared it. It's one of the things that united all councillors. And, and I, you know, there's a lot of work going into, into what, as a council, we're trying to do to reduce the CO2 emissions, etc. I'd, I'd just like to take you to um, Appendix 4, page 125, uh, Objective 3 in the document. Um, objective three is re reducing emissions from transport. Disappointingly, Spirit Energy, who have now run the gas terminal, have, uh, have stopped shipping their bulk condensate from the tank farm. They used to pick it up in, 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 uh, you know, in seagoing tankers, in bulk loads, probably the most efficient way they could do it from a CO2 point of view. They are now transporting it by road tanker from Barrow to Immingham which means something like four journeys each day, eight return journeys. That doesn't, to me, square in with our, 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 our desire as a council uh, to reduce emissions. And it's just unfortunate that one of the big uh, sort of employers in the area um, hasn't, has, hasn't come on board with, 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 with what we as a council are trying to achieve. Thanks, Les. <clears throat> Any... Thank you, Dad. Um, the recent death of Alan Torville, the CEO of the Northern Tidal Power Railway Company, was sad news indeed. And our thoughts and condolences go out to Alan's family and work colleagues at this time. Alan was a true friend of Barrow, and his tidal energy expertise, coupled with his dedication to the Morecambe Bay and Dublin Estuary projects, will be sorely missed. You know. The directors of the NTBG company have assured me that they will intend to continue to work on these projects and bring Allens and thousands of Barrow, Millam and West Coast people dreams to fruition. Today, today's report points out, as already been mentioned, and I quote, that climate change could bring rising sea levels and our low-lying coastal areas will be susceptible to flooding and coastal erosion. And Barrow Borough will face the risk from river and surface water flooding. It is our duty as a council, therefore, to do everything in our power to prevent this from happening. As the tidal gateway enables us to control the tide levels, it would seem common sense to me that we should support any plan that enables us to do this. If it works for London and the Thames, why not for Barrow and Furness Peninsula? This should not be a party political issue. I hope it isn't. And as the previous Labour Council, together with the Lancaster and South Lakes Councils, voted to support Alan Torville and the NTPG in their efforts to get the government involved, we can do likewise. Simon Fell is working hard in Parliament to push for these projects to get started and we should support him by giving the backing of the local council. We can also help by letting the Cumbria LEP know that we support the projects and that we think that they should support us in our efforts to achieve our climate change targets. In addition to the flooding and erosion issues, there are, of course, many other benefits that the Tidal Gateway will give us, such as reduction carbon emissions and the production of enough electricity to supply two million houses. Think of the reduction in carbon emissions if every vehicle travelling to Lancaster and the south had 25 to 38, 30 miles less to travel. Similarly, think of the reduced carbon emissions from the thousands of vehicles that travel to Millam and the north if they have only five miles to travel in one gear instead of 20 miles uphill and round bends changing gear every few hundred yards. There's no doubt that to achieve the climate uh, change targets that we have set ourselves, we will have to use every means at our disposal. If we put party politics aside and work as a team, I'm sure that we can succeed. I am also sure that the people of Barrow will expect us to do just that. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Pemberton. 
true. I've got a few ones up now. Uh, Councillor Ronson. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I'd like to point out that uh, a lot of what the Council have started doing and have been able to do so far um, is, is a great start, but there's still some really low-hanging fruit that we could quite easily uh, achieve, namely uh, the fact that the 85-page report on carbon reduction has been posted out to 36 councillors. Uh, it seems it seems completely unnecessary at the moment now that we've got so much digital working going on, uh, and not to mention the fact that all of us councillors have uh, council-provided means of um, digital working, such as our iPads and laptops. Um, I'd love to see the council in future reduce the amount of paper uh, that we produce and uh, transport. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Johnson. Councillor McEwen. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, I agree with everything that's been said on both sides of the chamber, this that we all agree with, we need this uh, climate change. Just to, for a heads up, like, in talking about transport and the emissions, we, we are in discussion, as some will know, with bringing stagecoach uh, for electric buses. So we're in, uh, we're in conversation with them at the moment and the county council. So this is something that we're looking into. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Bill. No further ends. Is that you come in, Lee? Yeah, thank you. Um, first, just a quick comment on the barrage. I've not, I've, I've, I've been there presentations, um, Mr. Torval did, and uh, seen evidence before he got involved as well. And I don't think it's conclusive of the benefits, certainly on the cost benefit ratio. Uh, it's not conclusive about the impact to the ecology. And um, it won't control the tides. I live on Walney. It's not going to stop the sea getting over here, is it? So that, that's a mute point in my respect. So, so if you're controlling the tides because of the rising tides because of climate change, you're really missing the point here. You want to address the climate change. Um, um, tidal energy can be produced without putting a road over it and using concrete. There's loads of reasons uh, for and against it. It needs more research. It needs more debate. It's not a political decision. It's, it's based on uh, the, the balance of the cost benefit and the best for the environment. Um, for the for the climate change policy, I'm really glad that we've got to this point where it's, it's going to no longer be a draft. It's been too long to be a draft because of the COVID has delayed us getting it actually approved. Um, COVID's actually caused a positive uh, impact to carbon levels and air quality, um, but we should use that to push further and push harder to actually make the benefits. So we might achieve the date earlier if possible. Um, it's also been noticeable that a lot of people have reconnected with the environment through COVID when they've only been, only, uh, been allowed to exercise or go outside locally rather than drive in for the initial stages of lockdown. And I think that local exercise and appreciation of our place is something um, should enhance the, um, how the public can perceive this um, initiative. Um, the other thing is, um, as mentioned before, about the work of the climate um, group, which is cross party and it's noticeable to me as well how much the staff are more involved, council staff, in, a, in a, a group like this. It really is a combined effort. And the passion and commitment by everybody, staff and members, has been fantastic. So it's really exciting to see it move into um, an approved document, which means we can get the public involved and um, other organisations. And importantly, as, um, as was um, described earlier on, businesses, because we need to use our influence to help um, businesses um, reduce their carbon footprint. So although it was said that there's uh, things going on that could be better, with this policy approved, we can actually address it and get businesses on board. Um, the other thing I want to point out, last thing, sorry, last thing, promise. Um, there, is a, there is an aspect to this, which isn't just little, uh, little um, actions we can take and the bigger actions. It's that the impact on um, our residents could be um, wide because one of the examples is um, making houses uh, fuel efficient. So for um, our residents in deprived areas, um, we've got 15.1%, I think the report says, of souls in fuel poverty. Now the national average is 10.9. So it's not, it's not a good figure. And by making houses, certainly in deprived areas, 
fuel efficient, it means less money spent on heating the houses. So we should see, um, it should address um, cold weather associated health uh, conditions. So it's not just about the climate. This is a whole rounded approach to the environment and how we live and what we're doing about the environment around us and looking after our residents. It calls for, um, it, it does actually call as well. So it's not just local. It calls on the housing renewal policy. It calls on uh, for us to call on government to provide powers, resources, and help us with funding to make, uh, to do everything possible. So it's not just about local, it's about lobbying, it's getting people on board. And if it's cross-party, then I thought that part will be cross-party too. So I think it's a really exciting thing. I know there's groups out there that were really looking at this and looking at, and looking at what we're going to do about this. So we need to really carry on with this and make it happen. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Would like to <clears throat> make a reply, Chair? Um, yeah, Councillor Hall, I didn't know anything about what you just said until you said it. If you want to speak to me outside the meeting, we'll see whether we can do something about that. Um, Councillor Ronson, I know exactly what you mean about the paper. Unfortunately, um, that decision was taken because if you're trying to be on the meeting on your iPad, you can't also be reading the agenda on your iPad and stuff at the same time. Um, we have made progress by not sending this stuff out. This is the first time it's gone out since we got our iPads. And the sooner we go back to not having it, the better. But to be honest, I don't know how you can scroll through this on your iPad at the same time as you're actually talking on it. It's That's why it was sent out. And hopefully it won't last too long. Um, the stuff about the barrage, Councillor Pemberton, it's, it's, it's way out of our hands. Um, it's not something that we can we can do and like lee said there's pros and cons but it ain't going to affect the, the beach on walney um but that's probably a, a a debate for another time rather than a, on this which i think we all agree on we need to do this for future people who live in our area and make sure that our area is still here for them to live in so i move it and lee's seconded it i think mm -hmm. so we have to vote on it do we john hold on calm down david you're better than me <clears throat> there. I will now ask the Democratic Services Manager to take a roll call on the vote, Scott. Thank you, Chair. The motion has been moved by Councillor Brook and seconded by Councillor Roberts. Please respond with for, against or abstain. <coughs> Councillors Asood. For. Barlow. For. Biggins. For. Blessard. For. Brooke? Four. Burley? Four. Burns? No. Four. Callister? Four. Cassidy? Four. Edward D. Four. Edwards H? Four. Gorn? Four. Hall? Councillor Hall? Four. Hamilton. Four. Johnston. Four. McClure. Four. McEwen. Four. McLeavy. Four. Maddock. Four. Mooney. Four. Morgan. Four. Pemberton. Four. Preston. Four. Roberts. Four. Robson. Four. Ronson. Four. Seward. Four. Shirley. Four. Thompson A. Four. Thompson C. Four. Wall. Four. Worthington. Four. That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Thanks, John. <clears throat> Agenda item number 10, review the constitution, including officer and committee delegations. I call upon the chairman for the executive committee, Councillor Brooke. Well, hello again, if there's anybody still out there on YouTube. This should see them off. Anyway, this is a review of the constitution, which has been through um, various meetings of members, and we have to bring it to council to get agreed. Um, 
I'm sorry, it's very difficult to make stuff about the constitution and stuff interesting. I spent many a year working with community groups and they couldn't get, they just wanted <laughs> to get out of the way. They only look at it when something goes wrong. But it does actually say how we work and agrees how we work. And we need to find this balance between authority for members, committees and officers and stuff. And this writes it down. And I'm sorry, it's not exciting. Uh, and I have to read out this stuff that's been provided for me. So here goes. This report proposes changes to the constitution to add clarity to the council's operations and delegations. It brings in a definition of the council's policy framework and also seeks to introduce a new general par public participation scheme. Um, the work has taken into account the recommendations from the local government association governance review which we all took part in over quite a few months um, at the end of last year uh, so this would have been actually going in March if we hadn't have had to postpone the meeting um, there are a number of appendices in particular appendix one provides the defined list of the policy framework plans and strategies um, it's proposed that policies not included in this list would be matters for the executive and that's picked up in the executive um, committee delegations recommendation from the LGA review was that the role of the executive committee and responsibility for policy issues be reviewed. These proposals make it clear which ones are for council and which ones are with the executive committee. And proper officer appointments and in appendix two have been reviewed and members note the proposal to transfer the role of the returning officer and electoral registration to the chief executive with a originally that was from the 1st of June, but now we're suggesting from the 1st of July 2020, because I don't think even Boris can call an election before then, so it won't matter. Um, it's for full council to make that appointment. The proposals also address the interim arrangements for the head of legal and governance, which sees the monitoring officer role continue to sit with democratic services manager until the post is appointed. And the officer delegations, Appendix 3, have been reviewed. They reflect more general delegations for the chief executive and directors and will continue to be kept under review as the organisational structure is, is reviewed. Um, the delegations consider the balance between member and officer decision making to remove some current anomalies and it's intended to achieve an appropriate future balance. Um, committee delegations in Appendix 4. The main changes coming forward relate to the terms of reference for the executive committee, which I referred to earlier. And if agreed, it would take immediate effect. Other changes to flag are the proposed change of the name of audit to audit and governance and amendments to reflect the incorporation of the standards arrangements and also a proposal for licensing regulatory subcommittee to hear and determine any matter where an applicant for a license has a right to appear and be heard by the committee. Following discussions at executive, further consideration is to be given to the roles of overview and scrutiny and, and executive committee in high value contract matters. And any further proposals would come through in a future report. And the general par public participation scheme in appendix five um, brings forward a structure for speaking at committees as well as full council, which we just saw before, and the amendments to the constitution incorporate these. These will be reviewed as appropriate with regard to virtual meetings. Um, in considering the timing of public questions, a review has taken place and it's suggested that we enable questions to be submitted for working days prior to a meeting rather than seven as is currently in the constitution. Um, Appendix 6 incorporates some minor amendments to the financial regulations and contract standing orders. These will be submitted to a full review over the coming year. Finally, Recommendation 6 is an additional recommendation following review of decision making during coronavirus. And it is requested on the basis that it is only used in exceptional circumstances where it is impossible or impractical to take a decision through the relevant committee or council meeting. I therefore move, finally, that one, the council approves the proposed changes to the constitution as detailed within appendix one with immediate effect. Two, approve 
The revisions to the proper officer appointments and officer scheme of delegation as detailed in appendices two and three, including the appointment of returning officer and electoral registration officer to take effect as detailed within the report. Three, approves the revised terms of reference and delegations to committees as set out in appendix four to take effect from the start of the new municipal year and from the date of the annual meeting in May. Four, approves the general public participation scheme as attached in Appendix 5. Five, approves the revisions to the financial regulations and contract standing orders as attached at Appendix 6. And further, delegate the following decision-making powers to the Chief Executive, Directors and Heads of Service in consultation with the Leader or Chair of the relevant committee. That is, powers to take any decision on behalf of the Council not otherwise delegated, which can lawfully be delegated to officers, subject to the decision taker before taking the decision, having taken appropriate steps to consult the leader and or chair, and if appropriate, members of the committee, which would, save for this delegated power, have taken the decision. Ta-da! Finished. Well done. <clears throat> Is there a second there? I think Debbie's got uh, Debbie Starr, sorry, legal services might want to come in. I'll second it and reserve the right. Anyway. I know, I know she, she was wanting to come in. I just want to second her first before you can come in. Second it and reserve well, the right. She's not going to tell me I did it all wrong, is she? No, no. I just well, that's to... what I'm working with. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, Debbie. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that the revisions to the um, delegations to committees were to take immediate effect. I think there was a reference to the annual meeting, but it is immediate effect because we haven't got the annual meeting. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thanks, Debbie. Um, sorry, yeah, that's in these notes on, yeah. Sorry, that is in the notes that I've got here for it, but it, I think it did say in the reports from now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, you're not repeating it all anyway. No. So, any further hands? Do you want to come in, Lee? Yeah, um... I, I wish he would repeat it all because it was entertaining. Um, just, just to, <laughs> just to clarify, um, I've, I've been involved in this uh, local resilience forum. I've seen how um, COVID has revealed a different way and quicker way to get things done. So um, I think some, some of the measures in this are certainly the additional ones to do with uh, crisis management or crisis phases. I think it. They're, they're essential because um, the response by the council and by partners and by uh, Cumbria County Council has been immense. And this is just a little bit of a lessons learned of how to actually move quicker and um, be more resilient and agile. So it's um, all good stuff. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. No further hands raised. <clears throat> Can I ask the Democratic Service Manager to take a roll call, please, of votes cast? Chair, does the chairman, just the chairman of the exec wish to say anything before I do take the roll call? No. Nah. Fingers crossed. Derek? <laughs> no. Nah. No. Okay. Uh, the motion has been moved by Councillor Brooke and seconded by Councillor Roberts. Please respond with for, against or abstain. Councillors Asood? For. Barlow? For. Biggins, for Blessard, for Brook, for Burley, for Burns, for Callister, for Cassidy, for Edward D, for Edwards H, for Gorn, for Hall, for Hamilton, for Johnston, for. McClure. For. McEwen. For. McLeavy. For. Maddock. For. Mooney. For. Morgan. For. Pemberton. For. Preston. For. Roberts. For. Robson. For. Ronson. <coughs> Councillor Ronson? For. Seward? For. Shirley? For. Thompson A? For. Thompson C? For. Wall? For. Worthington? For. That's carried unanimously.
Thank you. Thanks, John. <clears throat> Quickly moving on, agenda item number 11, reviewing the member development strategy. I call upon the chairman of the executive committee, Councillor Brook. Right. Sorry, me again. Um, we've got the member development strategy. It's been to the exec. It's been reviewed. We took on board comments from the scrutiny committee, and it's just I just move that we adopt it. Is there a seconder? Seconded, and I reserve the right not to speak on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Any hands raised? <clears throat> I will now ask the Democratic Services Manager to take a roll call on the votes cast, please. The motion has been moved by Councillor Brook and seconded by Councillor Roberts. Please respond with four against or abstain. Councillors Asood? Four. Barlow? Four. Biggins? Four. Blazard? Four. Brook? Four. Burley? Four. Burns? Four. Council. Thank you. Callister? Four. Cassidy? Four. Edwards D. Four. Edwards H. Four. Gorn. Four. Hall. Four. Hamilton. Four. Johnston. Four. McClure. Four. McEwen. Council McEwen. Four. Thank you. McLeavy. Four. Maddock. Four. Mooney. Four. Morgan. Four. Pemberton. Four. Preston. Four. Roberts. Four. Robson S. Four. Ronson. Four. Seward. Four. Shirley. Four. Thompson A. Four. Thompson C. Four. Wall. Four. And Worthington. Four. Again, that's carried unanimously. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Agenda item number 12, Lancaster and South Cumbria Joint Committee. I call upon the leader of the council, councillor M.A. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is quite a long piece of paper, so you'll have to bear with me, but it won't be as long as, as any of Derek's. <laughs> Lancaster and South Cumbria Joint Committee. The proposals in this report look to support the shaping and driving of economic development across the Lancaster and South Cumbria economic regions through the creation of a robust, formally consulted joint committee between Barrowborough Council, South Lakeland District Council and Lancaster City Council. I move that the establishment of a joint committee with Lancaster City Council and South Lakeland District Councils covering all respective administrative areas and to promote the economic, social and environmental well-being of the area. Two, delegation of the functions within the terms of reference and adopt the procedural rules as attached in Appendix 1 and outlined within the report. That Lancaster, three, that Lancaster City Council act as the initial host authority for one year. For that subject to the council approving the establishment of the joint committee, appoint the leader and the chair of the executive committee to the joint committee. Five, that the monitoring officer be authorised to make all necessary constitutional amendments to the council's constitution to reflect the delegations and joint arrangements. There's there's very a lot of documentation on this, so if you've read it, I'll answer questions. If anybody's got anybody's got any. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Thanks, Tom. Is there a second there? Yeah, I'll second that. Thanks, Derek. Councillor McLeavy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, I would like to propose that the sentence uh, be amended to include the appointing of the leader of the operation uh, of the opposition group. Uh, the leader of our group was involved from day one in the setting up of this venture, and indeed was at its. Is there a second there, Chair? Uh, could you just hold there, please? It appears that the stream may be offline. Uh, 
IT are just going to check on that point. Well, do you want a comfort break for five minutes? I think that might be yeah. that might be worthwhile. <laughs> <clears throat> so we're coming back at seven o'clock then, eh? Yes, we're going to adjourn. Yeah. Is that agreed? We'll come back seven o'clock. Agreed, Mr. Mayor. Agreed, yeah. Mr. Mayor. Thank you.
Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, so, before, before we got... Sorry, Mr. Bear, before we got uh, interrupted, um, we were on agenda item 12. Councillor McLeavy had submitted an amendment. Uh, I, I wasn't sure whether that got seconded or not. Uh, no. The, the uh, legal no. services uh, officer, Debbie Storr, would like to, to speak on the matter. Uh, so if you could let Debbie Storr. Please. Debbie? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I was just seeking clarity um, from the councillor with regards to the potential amendment, um, just for clarity, because um, at the moment, I'm assuming it's relating to recommendation four, subject to the council approving the establishment, the appoint, the leader and the chair of the executive. Um, there was reference to appointment of the leader of the um, Conservative Party. Was that in place of the one of the other I suppose it would have to be the chair of the executive so that both group leaders were on the joint committee. It's just that the membership at 4.1, which is on the appendix one to the report, um, sets out in the terms of reference that the membership will consist of two members from each constituent authority. So it's not suggesting that it adds a third member. It would just be agreeing which two members would go forward from this authority. Um, and just for information, I understand these um, procedural rules were approved by Lancaster's cabinet um, last week. Can Thanks, I come Debbie. back on that, Mr. Mayor? <clears throat> Go on, Martin. <clears throat> could, I, could I therefore um, propose that if only two members are uh, uh, allowed onto the group, that the two members be the leader of the council and the leader of the opposition? Is that your amendment? That's my proposal. Right. <clears throat> ben? Is that, really? is that seconded, Chair? Uh, that's what I'm asking for. Councillor Shirley? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Are you seconding the amendment? I'm trying my best to, but I keep getting interrupted. Right. Um, I would like to second the amendment, Mr Mayor, and reserve the right to speak. Any further hands? Debbie? You put your hand up. Sorry, it was up from last time, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Any further hands? Can I just say that Councillor Hall is also experiencing what I experienced, that he cannot, uh, he's not back on. He didn't sign off, but he can't get on. Okay. Thanks, Hazel. <clears throat> so, would you like to come in now, Ben? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Are we proceeding without Councillor Hall? Sorry to question your uh, position, Mr Mayor. Well, we can have another break for 10 minutes, and if you wanted to... <clears throat> Chairman, uh, the protocol is that... Uh, if a member is unable to connect, then we do adjourn for 10 minutes to see if we can uh, get Councillor Hall back. So we're we breaking for 10 minutes, then, members, as a protocol, which we just agreed. I agree that. If that's a protocol, Mr. Mayor, we'll have to do it, yes. Right. Just bear with me. Uh, it's just coming back in now, I think. Hi, right, John. Welcome back. Got what happened there? Councillor Shirley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. Yeah, I support this amendment as put forward by Councillor McLeavy uh, for all of the reasons that he mentioned, um, and also the leader of the opposition represents uh, councillors who represent a third of the population of the council uh, of the borough. And um, so, on that basis, I think it's uh, right that uh, all residents are equally represented uh, by the leader of the council and the leader of the opposition. Thanks, Ben. <clears throat> <Are> we... 
Jo, come in then. Are we, are we taking the vote on the amendment first? Yeah, nobody else has indicated that they wish to, to speak. Um, we can take the amendment to recommendation four. Those for the amendment. <clears throat> Do we roll call, please, sir? So this is for the amendment. I'll just read out uh, recommendation four. That subject to the council approving the establishment of the joint committee, appoint the leader and the leader of the opposition. So that is the amendment. Could you vote for, against, or abstain, please? Councillor Asood. Abstain. Councillor Barlow. It's mute. Councillor Barlow. Sorry, John. Against. Councillor Biggins. Against. Councillor Bussard. Against. Councillor Brook. Against. Councillor Burley. For. Councillor Burns. Against. Councillor Callister. Abstain. Councillor Cassidy. Against. Councillor Edwards D. Oh. Edwards H. Oh. Gorn. Oh. Hall. Oh. Hamilton. Against. Johnston. Absolutely. Councillor Johnston. To leave. She's, she's had another meeting to go to, John. Councillor McClure. Mc, McClure. Far. Councillor McEwen. <laughs> Councillor McCleavy. Oh. Councillor Maddox. <laughs> Councillor Maddox. Hey. Councillor Mooney. Councillor Mooney. Against. Councillor Morgan. Against. Councillor Pemberton. For. Oh. Councillor Preston. Against. Councillor Roberts. Against. Councillor Robson. Against. Councillor Ronson. For. Councillor Seward. Against. Councillor Shirley. For the amendment. Councillor Thompson A. Against. Thompson C. Against. Councillor Wall. Against. And Councillor Worthington. Councillor Worthington. Oh. The amendment is lost for 11 against 18 abstentions two. Uh, sure. <clears throat> Would the <clears throat> leader or the second day want to say anything to reply? Yeah, I'll reply. Huh? Unless Derek wants to say something, does he? His hand hasn't got up. Right, okay. Right, well, this, this, this is what we've been working for for a while. We did put in a growth bid, as the whole council knows, and um, <clears throat> that we haven't heard about that yet. But we just want to strengthen our position because uh, the new devolution bill is coming out in the autumn and we need to strengthen our position uh, for a Bay Authority. Otherwise, we'll end up in a unitary Cumbria, which is uh, I don't think either group wants that. I think we're all in uh, in favour when we've discussed it before of a Bay Authority for that's the, the right thing for our borough. 
I can't make, I can't change that that constitution. It's been through Lancaster. We will have a meet for at the first meeting. I will discuss it with the other members. But I know both of them have got two members of the administration on. But I will raise it at the first meeting in the spirit of being nice. But other than that, uh, I think we should go forward with our heads held high and try and, and make the best out of this because it really, it really will bring <coughs> some stability and some. Uh, it means we can plan forward a lot better. It, it won't cost any money at the moment, but for the administration once a year, uh, once every three years. And I think it's a great step forward for our borough. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. <coughs> can I ask the <coughs> admins manager to take a roll call on the original motion, please? Yes, Chairman. Now we'll be voting on the substantive motion. So the motion has been moved by the leader of the council and seconded by Councillor Brook. Please respond with for, against or abstain. Councillor Sood? For. Barlow? For. Biggins? For. Lazard? For. Brook? For. Burley? Abstain. Burns? For. Callister? For. Cassidy? For. Edward D. Abstain. Edwards H? Abstain. Gorn? Abstain. Hall. Against. Hamilton. For. McClure. Abstain. McEwen. For. McCleavy. Abstain. Maddox. For. Mooney. For. Morgan. For. Pemberton. Abstain. Preston. For. Roberts. For. Robson. For. Ronson. Abstain. Seward. For. Shirley. Abstain. Thompson A. For. Thompson C. Four. Wall. Four. Worthington. He's entered the waiting room for this meeting. I don't know what's going on. Council Worthington. Abstain. Apologies, John. My tablet's died. It won't charge, so I've had to come back in on my phone. Okay, thank you. The motion is carried. Four twenty against one. Abstentions, 10. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. <clears throat> Agenda item 13A1, report of the planning committee. I call upon the chairman of the planning committee, Councillor Colin Thompson. Uh, are there any questions for the chairman? Wait a minute. I haven't finished yet. I haven't started yet. Right. Mr. Mr. Mayor, we, can, we can't actually see Colin Thompson. How do we know it's him? We can't actually see him. Well, I, I struggle that way as well. I can't even see myself on, on it either. We can see him. He's put his hand behind his back. Turn the turn camera around on the, at the top, the gallery one. We can see the back of your computer, not the front. Oh, that's very clever, Wendy. I would like to see, so I know. I know what to do. I'm looking straight at you now. Put them at the top. On the left hand side of it, at the top, there's a gallery. I think you need to press switch camera at the top left, Colin. That's the 
long. That's it. Welcome, son. Welcome. Hey, right, we're right now, are we? Yeah. Right. Mr Mayor, I move that the report of the planning committee meetings held on the 11th of February and the 10th of March be received. There are no recommendations referred to council. The matter is determined by the committee. He's gone on mute. You've gone on mute. You've gone on mute, Colin. Is that better? Is it now? Yeah, well, can you start again, so... Right. I move that the report of the meetings of the planning committee held on the 11th of February and 10th of March be received. There are no more recommendations referred to council. The matter is determined by the committee for all in exercise of its delegated powers. And as I was not uh, at these both committee meetings, I was otherwise engaged in the country. I'm sure that the uh, vice chair will answer questions on those matters. Thanks, Colin. Right. Martin, you raise oh, your hand. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Don't you want a second, eh? Mr. Mayor, don't you need a bit second in? No, you, you don't. No. It's just the exec, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Can we just have one chairman, please? Martin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, um, planning meeting, March the 10th, 2020. Unfortunately, there's no page numbers on the document. Item 125, Housing Development Lots Road, Askham. Submission of affordable housing scheme, a mix of three and four bedroom houses, three dwellings to be affordable, equating to 10%. And again, item 126, no page numbers. Land opposite Green Hills Pond Dalton, 36 houses. Item 1.3A states, no less than 10% to be affordable units. So let's say a minimum of four dwellings in this scheme. When I was a member of the planning committee, I asked on numerous occasions, what is meant by affordable housing? Unfortunately, I am still very unclear. Could I ask the chair of planning, what constitutes affordable housing and how is it arrived at? For example, are average salaries taken into consideration Bearing in mind, salaries vary greatly across the borough and, of course, within local industry. What would be of value is an awareness to home buyers or those seeking to buy what is meant by affordable. I know for a fact that when they read in the press or online of planning permission being granted for new houses, 10% are to be affordable. I've been asked the question, what does it mean by affordable? Could the chair enlighten us, please, and further look into making those seeking to buy aware of what is meant by affordable? Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Who's um, going to say... Colin? You muted again. Uh, the vice chair said she would... Uh... Tech questions on me because I wasn't at both these meetings. I was in uh, East Bond in February and hospital appointment in, Jan in March. Thanks, Colin. Hi. Councillor Thompson, would you like to? <laughs> yeah, well, to it's, reply? it's defined in our local plan of what affordable housing is. So if any of your residents want to look, they can, they can look in that for it. Affordable housing is housing that can be. Afforded to me, afford. I would prefer to have rented houses built, but uh, you know, uh, but builders aren't very happy at building uh, affordable rent rental housing. But uh, as far as I know, it's it's in the local plan. The the uh, actual wording of what an affordable house is. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Sam. Councillor Shirley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, numerous residents, oh sorry, excuse me, it's uh, volume four, item 125, Mr Mayor, and uh, numerous residents and organisations uh, local to this particular plot in Askham offered observations to the council and were disappointed to find only a summary of their views were put forward to the planning committee for councillors to consider. 
is the chair or in this case the vice chair of planning aware that residents who submit observations to, uh, to planning applications and um, unless they waiver their right to remain anonymous only a summary of what they submit will be presented to councillors for your consideration and if so will she consider altering our way of engaging with residents to ensure that local people are made aware that they have the option to waiver their rights to remain anonymous when submitting observations should they wish for their observations to be heard in full yeah, uh, thanks, Council Shirley. The, the, pro the problem is it's under G D GDPR. Uh, we're not allowed by law now. The, the, the legal ruling was that we're not allowed to, to put people... We used to put people's names in and their addresses, and, and by law we're not allowed to do that now. We have got a waiver, and I, I am positive that they... Within the letter they get when they get told about the uh, that the, the, their, their consultation letter has been received... In that letter, I'm sure it says that they can waiver their rights for an, an for anonymity if they so wish. But Thanks, I will Sam. check that up and let you know. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Yeah, uh, page five two four, minute one oh eight. Uh, the updating of procedure for public speaking at planning committee because of the COVID. Um, What's the new protocol? Can you give me some details on that? If people don't have the internet, and, and you know many people don't have the internet, uh, how do they see plans and how do they know about things and how do they make objections? Thank you, Hazel. As, as far as I'm aware, uh, <coughs> uh, people can phone in from a phone if they want to see plans, uh, they, 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 I don't know how they do that now, to be quite honest with you. Uh, we've got a planning meeting on Tuesday, so we will be investigating how we, before then how we do things like this. I've no idea. The town hall's not open, and if you haven't got the internet, you can't go online to see them. There's no libraries open, so you can't go in there and use computers. So to be, to, to be quite frank, I think the assumption in, in a lot of things is, is that... Uh, people will have the internet, but I don't know if Debbie's got anything to add to that. Does she know anything about uh, how that's going to happen? Mrs. Starr? The protocol that the council's just adopted will apply, but it will be adapted for planning committee meetings. Uh, I think clearly we're working through the processes and the protocols, but we will work to support members of the public to ensure that they can participate wherever possible, and as has been indicated by the leader, um, people will be able to phone in um, if they're not able to access through a, a web browser. Um, the plans will be available online, but if they to communicate with the planning officers, then clearly we will be looking at how we facilitate access for all applications, and it might be um, we look at how we can make them available locally at a, a safe um, viewing point. But these are all the matters that are being worked up at the present time, but it's it's a, a valid comment. Could could I make a suggestion, Anne? Um, I mean, you'll remember... Can you, can you go through the chair, please? Sorry, through the chair, yeah. <laughs> could I make a suggestion to Anne, please? Um, that we go back to the old system where perhaps we could notify adjacent neighbours. That might help. We still do, as far as I know, Hazel. If there's a planning application, we, we, we still notify a, a certain area around, around that application. OK, thanks. OK. Thanks, Anne. Thanks, Hazel. Any further questions, Lee? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Affordable housing is defined in the local plan, just like Anne says. Um, it's uh, paragraph 7.12.2. And I can read it out for you, or you can look it up yourself. It's available on the council website um, as a download. Oh, so. Thanks, Lee. Any further hands raised? No. Do you agree with the report that the planning committee be received? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. I've just had a flashing sign up here. Your internet connection is unstable. Well, we'll, we'll plough on, plough on quickly. 
<laughs> Agenda item 13A to report the Licensing Regulatory Committee. I call upon the Chairman of the Licensing Regulatory Committee, Councillor Callister. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I move that the report of the meetings of the Licensing Regulatory Committee held on the 23rd of January and the 5th of March 2020 be received. There are no recommendations referred to Council. The matters determined by the committee were all in exercise of its delegated powers, and I will take questions on those matters. Thanks, Tony. Councillor Daniel Edwards. Yep. Uh, volume, volume 4, page 508, minute 38. Application for Hackney Licence and Private Hire Drivers Licences. Um, could the Chair please tell me how we're updating and issuing licences at the moment due to COVID? And are we how are we dealing with complaints and driving offences at the current time as well? Uh, thanks for that, Daniel. I mean, I'm not aware that there's any, any issues with, with, within the, the licensing department. As it stands at the moment, applications are being um, given out through delegated authority through that department. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not understanding where you're coming from. I can... I can Give us your question again. I'm just struggling with your question. Yeah, it's just looking at the current situation, because obviously with COVID, you know, things are changing. You know, people not being able to come into the town hall, etc. Yeah. Um, and with licences being updated and issuing of licences, and also any members of the public reporting any sort of concerns, any complaints, driving offences coming through, yeah, everything's happening just the same as it was before. It's, to be fair, Dan, so I'm struggling with your question. It seems to be seamless. Um, mm. but, but when I've actually used a taxi of late, that there doesn't seem to be any any sort of worries or queries around the, the, the issuing of licences at all. And believe you me, I have had a full email box over many months and at the moment, and quite quite frankly at the moment, I'm not getting any at all. So it does appear to be seamless. So I'm quite happy with the way things are going. Great. Thanks, Sonny. Thanks, Danielle. Councillor Hall? Yeah, uh, exactly the same minute. Um, it was. It's around... Uh, I've had a couple of taxi drivers complaining to me about uh, documentation sent out to them from the, uh, the officers. But that documentation isn't coming to the members of the committee. I don't know if you see them, Tony, or not. You'll have to a... tell me which documents you're referring to. It's it's all about the uh, the future licensing, etc. Suggestions. So, are, are we talking on actual cases or on a little bit of hearsay? Because again, my mailbox can be absolutely full with a whole range of different. Um, issues from, from, from drivers and from owners of, of the ranks, and there's nothing I'm getting at the moment. Well, I've had a couple of emails sent to me, so what I'll do, I'll, I'll forward them on to you. I was just wondering, do you actually see the stuff going out from the officers? I do. Right. So that's just you as chair, there's nobody else sees them? I see them as chair, yeah. Right. Okay. Any... <clears throat> Thanks, Liz. Thanks, Tony. Any further questions? Hands raised. <clears throat> Do we agree that the report of the licensing regulatory committee be received? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Agenda item 13A3, report of the licensing committee. The meetings of the licensing committee the 23rd of January and the 5th of March have been cancelled. Thank you. Agenda item 13A4, report of the executive committee. I call upon the chairman of the executive committee, Councillor Brook. Hello again. Um, the report of the meeting of the executive committee held on the 5th of February has been reported to the 27th. Uh, to the council on the 27th of February. It's gone out with all the, the minutes. I'm not sure why I'm telling you that, but it says that on my notes. Uh, I move that the report of the meetings of the executive held on the 4th of March and the 3rd of June 2020 be received and note that each of the recommendations contained therein have been dealt with under agenda items 8, 9, 10 and 11. Thanks, Derek. Is there a seconder? Seconded. Thanks, Lee. 
Councillor McCleavely. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, executive meeting, 4th of March 2020, volume 4, page 497, uh, minute 91, the High Street Fund update. Firstly, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to say what a great opportunity this is for Barrow, and we as a group are 100% behind it, as I know all councillors are. Opportunities like this come along once in a lifetime, and we need to grasp it with both hands. Secondly, I would like to thank all those involved for all their hard work, members and officers alike. Over the last 12 months or so, we've undertaken a couple of consult public consultations, resulting in seven to 800 responses responses, and I've had a number of workshops with consultants. Several projects have been identified and some good projects, which will be really nice to have. However, I am concerned that all the fund, although the fund is entitled Future High Streets Fund, we have no projects or enhancements to the high street. I have raised this concern uh, on several occasions. I've been contacted by a number of business owners, as of other members, asking what we are doing on the high street. Responses from the public consultation include the need to reduce the level of vacancies on the high street, the desire for the town centre to be bustling, vibrant and busy, the need for more things to do and enjoy within the town centre, and the creation of a more attractive town centre. I'm concerned, Chair, that some, that some good projects have been identified but none of these is on the high street, which is what the fund is for. We all want to see this submission of our plan succeed with the full amount of revenue being awarded. I'm just concerned that the projects we're submitting do not address the title of the government funding, which is Future High Streets Fund. I know we're getting close to the submission date of the 31st of July, but I would ask that we look again at the title of the fund. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Would you like to come in, Derek? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's the title of the fund, but as, as far as I'm aware, the feedback that we've had is that what we've, we're have we proposing meets it, and um, we've been further encouraged to um, put the final bid in. So, I, you know, the title, High Street, yeah, but it's, it's the town centre, and members, as you say, have all been involved in discussion. There's been a lot of um, public feedback on it, and... Um, you know, the name of the fund isn't what the criteria says. So, Thanks, that's Derek. it, really. Councillor Hall. Mute myself. Yeah, uh, from Derek, obviously. Volume 4, page 500. Um, 95. Councillor Performance Indicators. It actually, if you actually look at the uh, paragraph three, the number of food standard inspections were marginally below the target. This is this is pre-COVID. Um, I'm just wondering what what steps have been. Uh, obviously, there won't be much in the way of happening around inspections, but what what have we put in place uh, to look at the high risk um, uh, takeaways, etc. I.e., those at one two stars. And also, uh, since lockdown, there's an awful lot of pop-up um, uh, takeaways, similar to which uh, uh, in restaurants you can now go takeaway, that's fine. But there's a lot of pop-up ones in, in uh, private houses as well. And, and then the final thing I wanted to do was, was around alcohol sales. Um, I didn't really know whether to bring this up in licensing or here, but it can come up here. It, is that there are quite a few of these takeaways now offering licensing sales. Um, off license sales. Now, as far as I'm aware, uh, the last licensing subcommittee, we passed uh, a restaurant off, um, sorry, restaurant, uh, a takeaway to, to be allowed to deliver alcohol under very stringent um, sort of uh, uh, rules and regs. There was one already, I believe, at Ormers Gill, but I was only aware of two. Now, there are quite a few of these uh, restaurants, takeaways. Are now selling uh, uh, off sales alcohol, delivering to the door. Have we got control of that? What am I, do you want me to reply? I haven't got a clue. 
I'm not. I'm <laughs> still trying. I'm still trying to pint page five hundred and whatever it was that you said it right. was on. Well, um, the first thing is, is around. The first question is, uh, have we got things in place? And obviously, if you you can give a written answer, but have well, we that, got yeah. things in place to look at the high risk um, food um, sellers that are in the town? We had high risk before COVID. What are we as a council doing to ensure that they're not getting worse? But also, how are we picking up this growth in in takeaways? And then the final bit was around alcohol sales. Now, Tony's chairman of uh, of uh, licensing. I wasn't aware of more than two. Uh, Tony may know may, may know better. But it's really around the reg the regs and the enforcement of um, takeaways delivering alcohol to to the door. Well, I'll have to give you a written reply to that because none of that is really under the remit of the committee and I, I can't answer you. Well, I brought it up there because it's actually, it, it moves on from the food standard, food safety standard inspections mm. were, were below target before. So I'm assuming we haven't done any, I'm, and I, I, I might be wrong, but we are, the, the purpose of them is to protect the public. That's the key point I'm making. Oh, I'll get you a written response. I can't answer you. Thank you. Councillor Lee Roberts. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, the food inspections, we were down on capacity for the inspectors because the vacancies we were uh, struggling to fill. We've advertised it many times, but so all the high priority ones, all the high risk ones have been done. So they prioritise the ones at high risk. So the lower ones, which are just revisiting for ones that are four or five star, they were left to later for the inspectors to see. So there's no risk to the public. It's been done on a priority basis. And that was reported to the executive committee. And when the when the stats were asked, were shown to the committee, questions were asked on uh, how we're doing about uh, recruiting more. Um, I think we had some temporary sort of like um, inspectors in, but we're still recruiting, or we were certainly when the report was um, shown to the committee, but high priority ones were being done. Thanks, Lee. Can I come back? Councillor Edwards. Quickly. Could you go get a written reply? Yeah, no, I, I fully, fully get what Lee was saying, or Councillor Roberts was saying, that, but it's actually through the COVID period. We uh, Have we done any inspections is the question I was asking. And obviously if we haven't, then we're not doing this, you know, we, we, they're not doing the risk assessment based stuff we, we, we were determined to do beforehand. The point made, it's... Okay. <clears throat> yeah, you get a written reply, Les. It's up. Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Uh, same minute as Martin, page 497, minute 91, the, uh, the future high street. I agree with Martin's comments, and, and as a group, we are behind the plans. There's some excellent plans in this. They're very desirable, and there's been some hard work by officers, which I thank them for. But seriously, we as a council need to be very aware that there's a lot of unrest amongst business owners in the high street. Our high street is Dalton Road. I've also had uh, complaints or comments from Cavendish Street as well. They genuinely are very worried that they're not included in the major transformations within the high street fund. You can call it what you want, but if you're going to change the name if you're telling me that it's not high street then tell the people out there please that they're not likely to be included in it shops bring people to town to enjoy the good things that we're planning i don't think it's the other way around people don't come to a playground and a cafe and to look at a bit of sculpture and then go to the shops it's the other way around Thanks, Hazel. Steve Robson. Um, I, I don't I don't agree with the last thing that Councillor Edwards just said about shops being the only thing that bring people to town. And neither did her young Conservative member who spoke as a member of the public earlier. <clears throat> that what he wanted was activities in the town centre, and that's what would draw people in. I tend to agree with him more than Councillor Edwards. <laughs> 
Thanks, Steve. Tony? Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. I must admit, some of the questions this evening have been rather um, strange coming from the, the other side of the, uh, the chamber. Now, the last one, pretty much to me, takes the biscuit. Now, can we just confirm on that same minute that the Future High Street Fund and, and where we can move about can be going out to consultation or consultation has taken place? Enough said. Thanks, Tony. I haven't forgotten Ian. Councillor Mooney. Yeah, just a comment on the um, High Street Fund, basically, and I totally take on board the comments uh, from from Martin Hazel about, especially about business rates, which have come up tonight, and we've seen a real decline since the the 2012 Act that the government put through for um, collecting business rates. Obviously, they totally changed everything around. And that has been panned by a number of economists since then and people on the high street and, and big business. Maybe since since we're all in agreement by, about this, and obviously the opposition you know, are, are totally against the current business rate setup, and they're saying that uh, local local business owners are uh, voicing their concern. Perhaps since it's the the, uh, the actual central government that set business rates, maybe we can lobby our local MP to lobby his government about about this and share their concerns. Thanks, Ian. Councillor Burns. Thanks, Chair. Uh, and I'd just like to say I agree with what Tony and Ian and Steve have been saying. We have done a lot of consultation on this proposal, and um, we've also consulted with those civil servants that have been actually making sure that our business going in is correct and it ticks all the boxes. And they've actually said that. They've said it's a good bid, and they've actually encouraged us to go to, to, go to the next phase. I also would like to say that uh, our high street, as much as I want all of the shops there and different shops to come and different uh, things that are happening in the town. This isn't actually just Barrow that this is happening to. It's happening all over the country. There are shops and businesses closing down all over the place. We're in that sort of situation. We want to save as many of our high street shops and businesses as we can. In fact, we want to encourage independent small businesses to open up in our high street. And we're doing that. We're working with the people that are running the bid because that's another thing that we're actually looking to do, is talking to shopkeepers, owners, and actually encourage them, and with along with the bid, in doing that job together. We're not actually staying on our own. We are talking to people about what we want to see, and Steve Robson's quite right. We've got a lot of young people in Barrow that want more than what we've got in, in the high street. They want something that attracts them into the town centre and does something for them. And that's why we're looking at something to do with a youth zone, or youth work to actually get them in there. We've got to work with the market because that's a small area where we can actually have startup businesses taking place. So I understand what people are talking about. We don't want to lose shops and we don't want to lose businesses, but we're working very, very hard to make sure we tick all the boxes for this bid to go in and we can actually start working with people in Barrow to get our high street up and running happening all over the country but if we can get ahead of the game in Barrow we're onto something here so I understand what people are saying but we are working very very hard to get this up and running. Thank you Chair. Thanks Sam. Councillor McEwen. Thank you Mr Mayor. Yeah I agree with everything that Anne just said yeah it's not only in Barrow it's across the country uh, and we all want a vibrant high High street, of course we do. We don't want to see empty shop boarded up and stuff like that. Mm. And we want stuff for the young because they are the future. Totally get that. But let's not forget, ten years of austerity caused a lot of the things that's happening in this town and across the board in other towns. So let's not start thinking about say, you know, we're going forward with twenty five million that we're getting. Think of the austerity that we're suffering now. Who the government never done what they should have been doing. Thank you. Councillor Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm a bit confused about the questions that Martin's repeatedly asked about the uh, title of it, because he's been at presentations and consultations himself. And even at the last one, it was asked, and he got a, 
in my mind, a quite um, sensible and complete answer um, from, from a council officer who's um, dealing with the um, bid. And it was that um, the, the proposal creates a circuit of the town. It makes it clearer of a, a shopping circuit, which draws people in to Dalton Road, through Portland Walk, into the market and back round again. So it does actually include all areas. And um, Councillor Edwards said about High Street, then named other streets that need to be involved. Well, if, you, if you're saying Dalton Road's High Street, then you name Cavendish Street and Portland Walk, then you, 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 to me, you're contradicting your argument. It gets, High Street is just the title of the bid. We, we didn't choose that. That's what it's called. But um, the consultation that we've done um, has actually um, supported the schemes that are going forward. The number of um, the number of schemes that were proposed, the higher number that were consulted on and, and the public indicated they're in favour of, actually replicates the bid. Uh, and so, so it does match what the public want. And I think... Um, the other aspect of it is what was things that were high up on the list were things like open up the town hall for the public. Now that's not, and that doesn't sound like the high street, but that will be a massive draw into the town. It'll keep yeah. people in the town. So it is all to enhance the high street. It's not about high street alone and in isolation because it has to be um, something that actually reflects the need and the demand. And the consultants we've been using that put it together worked on other bids in elsewhere and they've worked on other schemes in towns. So they've actually advised us on what works. So it's not just been a case of, oh, we've come up with some schemes. There's been a lot of research and a lot of hard work gone into this and consultation. And the evidence shows that the schemes do actually support what the public want. Thanks, Lee. <clears throat> do you come in, Derek? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. finished. I mean, I'm not. I'm not really sure what my colleagues here are actually proposing, other than a generally vague statement that we should do something about Dalton Road. There's a limited amount of money. There's criteria for the bid. We've done consultation. We've come up with some key projects. We're putting the bid forward. We've been encouraged from the government and said it meets it meets the criteria. I'm not really sure exactly what it is you want us to do. Um, that you're not doing. You've been in all the meetings, and as far as I was aware, you support the proposals that are in there. So, pass. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Do you agree that the report of the Executive be received? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Gender item. 13A5, report of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee. I call upon the Chairman of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee, Councillor McLeavy. Thank you, Chair. I move that the report of the meetings of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee held on the 30th of January and the 11th of March 2020 be received. There are no recommendations referred to Council. The matters determined by the Committee were all in exercise of its delegated powers, and I will take questions on those matters. Thanks, Martin. Any questions for the Chairman of the Overview and Scrutiny? No. Do you agree that the report of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee be received? You're happy to second that, Chair. Don't need a second there. Oh, right. Why doesn't it? <clears throat> there, there are only questions. <clears throat> There's no uh, referred items uh, for Council to determine. Great. Thanks. Agreed. Does everybody else agree? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. <laughs> Agenda item 13B, questions to the leader. <clears throat> no questions have been submitted to the leader of the council under notices required by standing order 10.2 and 10.4. Do members have any questions for the leader of the council relevant to the business before us tonight? If asking questions, could you please refer to the committee date and minute number rather than the page number in the volume? One, two. Councillor Shirley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's um, agenda right, uh, sorry, page, page 313, item 2.1. Um, can I start by thanking the leader for her encouraging answer to my last question? Um, 
Leader, the day after the, count, the government relaxed its lockdown measures, residents and volunteers at Ronhead collected no fewer than 45, 45, 45 bags of waste that had been left behind by inconsiderate visits, visitors to the area. Throughout Dalton North, particularly at Ronhead and Ascombe Beach Car Park, public bins are persistently left overflowing at the moment. And whilst we, of course, understand uh, current uh, restrictions and limitations, uh, are in place and um, the contract which the council has with its provider states that when these bins are more than 70 percent full they should be emptied it appears that this isn't happening leader and i wondered if you would intervene to ensure that the public waste collection contract is honored so that all areas of the borough especially our many visitor hotspots are kept clean and tidy thanks ben uh, yes uh, thanks council yes uh, yes i will at first, when lockdown first came, there was no emptying of bins because obviously with the COVID and, and lockdown and uh, furlough uh, we had, uh, and worry and isolation, we had a lot of, we had members of staff off. So, you know, you know, we could not ask FCC to do this because they were overstretched. Things are back to normal and they have been put back on. But I will make sure that, uh, that they are being emptied because at the moment, that's the last thing we need. We are, we are looking at uh, other ways to do waste because I've always been really upset that there's never been recycling containers at, at places, you know, of beauty mm. where people can put the plastic bottles and the cans. So I think I think we are going to be doing a review of stuff like that. And I, I really think that we that people actually themselves need to take some responsibility. You know, they do. They need to take some responsibility. And they need, if they take rubbish and take food and drink out, they should take that rubbish home with them. And, and I think education needs to begin with children. And I know uh, <clears throat> in normal times when schools are open, Peter Buckley goes into school, because I actually went with Hayley Preston once to uh, the school where she's a governor at, and he does a wonderful presentation about waste and recycling to the to young, ch young primary school children. And hopefully as soon as schools get back in and all our staff are back in and it's safe to go about we'll resume then and hopefully hopefully catch people young so they do take some responsibility for their own waste. Thank you. Can I come back on that, Mr Mayor, very quickly? Very briefly. Thank you. Thank you, Leader, for your response. And um, you mentioned Peter Buckley. Can I just um, echo the praise that you um, give to Mr Buckley? He's uh, one of our many fantastic officers in the council and has been a very responsive to um, the challenges which we're facing in Dalton North at the moment. So I just wanted to place thanks on behalf of residents um, to Mr Buckley for his work. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor McEwen. Thank you, Mr Mayor. My uh... To the point to the leader is the executive third of June, minute eight, COVID-19 COVID hardship fund. Does the leader agree with me that now was not the right time to stop free school meal vouchers to families struggling through the summer holidays? This is a lifeline to struggling families, but after a young footballer urged the government to change their mind, Boris and his government have done a U-turn. This is not because he had change of mind. This was through a pressure from a young footballer, Marcus Rashford. The support he got to bring pressure on the government, if this pressure had not been brought to the fore, this government would not have supported our, our children in poverty. Families are struggling, would have struggled further through the summer. And furthermore, in an area of the deprived, Mr. Fell, our MP, agreed not to extend it. Does the leader agree with me on this point? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Leader. Thanks, Bill. Do you want to make a reply, Anne? Or... Uh, no, can you see if there's any more questions on the same subject, uh, Mr. Mayor, please? And then I'll answer them all at once. Yeah. Councillor Hall. He started speaking and he stopped. Has it gone again? Councillor Hall, you need to unmute. I thought I'd <laughs> Hope you can't lip read. No, I'd actually uh, lowered my hand. Um, 
Right. Thanks, Les. <clears throat> Any further questions? No, you're okay. I'm... Right, thanks, Mr Mayor. It's been a very long meeting, this. I, th I can't yeah. remember the last time we had a full council meeting that well, went on up till this time. Normally, they go on, they go on about uh, half an hour, an hour at the most. So it's been very grueling, I'm sure, for all of us. And I'm sure everybody wants something to eat and a nice glass of something or a cup of tea. But just on this on this question, I think it's very serious. You know, we've got we've got children who are, who get free school meals who will now get the vouchers. But it, it, fifteen pound a week is not a lot of money, even though it's gratefully received from uh, the U-turn that uh, the government did today. But what worries me is the people that are not on that list, because obviously since lockdown and since COVID. There's so many people, there's millions of people signed on for universal credit who obviously haven't made an application yeah. for free yeah. school meals. So obviously these are not in the system. So it's really worrying that we're, and we need to pick up where these children are in whatever shape or form we can because these children, obviously, the families will really need help because they're obviously used to not budgeting and having, having an income and obviously suddenly the it's gone, it's gone right down their income and they will really will be struggling. So we need to pick, pick that up. Uh, we have got a hardship fund, which the government did give us for all sorts of things. Part of, part of it is for, uh, part of it is for um, council tax relief for people who are struggling to pay the council tax. And, but I think we're, we've been having a chat amongst the leadership team and we are, and we are, we are going to bring a proposal to, uh, to the executive on the 8th of uh, July, which says that uh, it's only very, it's only in early days of preparation yet, but it does say that we will be taking some of that hardship money and using it for food for children in the summer holidays. I think this is admirable, we need to do it. Also, there will be some activities done by uh, the Women's Community Matters because they've managed to love Barrow together with, which is a, 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 a mixture of all different sorts of organisations coming under one umbrella. It's WCM, the Well, Love Barrow Families. They, they've got some money from Lance Chase Kelly to do activities and feed children over the summer holidays. So hopefully we, we'll be having a meeting shortly and we'll all, all, all of us who are concerned about that and who, can, who, are, who are planning these things will get together, have a meeting, and work out the best way forward that we can do to get this money to where to get this money and this food to where it's needed. So, so there's no child goes hungry in this borough. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Leader. Nearly there. Agenda eight and fourteen. Planning committee chair and vice chair. This report seeks the change change of the chair of the planning committee, and I move that councillor. M.A. Thompson be appointed chair and councillor C. Thompson vice chair of the planning committee. Is there a second there? I'll second that. <clears throat> Everybody agreed? Approved the changes? Agreed. Great. Thank you. Councillor, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Edwards yeah. wants to say something. Hazel. Yeah, I do want to ask a question, actually. Um, I'm not against this, but because um, I'm told that the vice chairman's been the main spokesman during the meetings in any case. Um, my question is, does the time rule for chairman apply to other chairmen in other committees? That, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, can I answer that? Of course you can. Right, no, it's no, no. only planning. It's only planning. It's because it's in the con it, it came out in, in the early nineties when I think it was East Cornwall where the where the, uh, the the chair of the planning committee got very, very friendly with developers and sold a massive amount of his land to a developer for housing. So it was it was classed as corrupt. So I'm sure I'm right about this, Debbie. It's a long time ago and my memories I've had a lot of wine since then and a lot of uh, a lot of sleeps, but but the ch the government changed the rules then, so so that councillors could only chair a planning committee for eight years, and then after that they had to come off. Well, I've been off for a year, 
but there's nothing in our constitution that says that I can't go back on again. And it doesn't affect any other committee. It's only that committee for some reason. You know, if you were going to be a cor corrupt chair, you'd be a corrupt chair on any committee, wouldn't you? Yeah, thank you. Right. Thanks, Faisal. <clears throat> Everybody agree? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Agreed. Agenda item 15, appointment to the committees to fill vacancies. I call upon the leader of the Conservative group. Yeah, that makes a change, doesn't yes, it? So. <laughs> uh, these changes are requested to replace the appointments filled by Councillor Rory McClure. I move that one, Councillor Ronson be appointed as an ordinary member of the Executive Committee and Councillor Wendy McClure be appointed as an ordinary member on the Licensing Regulatory and Licensing Committee with immediate effect. And two, that Councillor Wendy McClure be appointed as a substitute member of the Planning Committee, that myself, the appoint Hazel Edwards, be appointed as a substitute member on the Overview and Scrutiny Committee, and that Councillor Shirley be appointed as a substitute member on the Licensing, Regulatory and Licensing Committee with immediate effect. Thanks, Hazel. Is your second day? Yeah. Thanks, Les. Any questions? Do you agree the changes? Agreed. 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 And uh, thank you for your attendance tonight and whatever. We haven't got far to go home like, have we? <laughs> so, except for the likes of John, of course. Yeah. So thank you, everybody, and a Sen. Right. Thank you, Chair. Good night, all. Thank you.